Welcome to New Gameplay Today. I am Kyle Hilliard, here with Marcus Stewart. What's up, Marcus? Hey, how's it going? Good. This is The Rogue, colon, Prince of Persia, a game that got announced today, if you're watching this right when the, the video goes live. And it, it, for me, at least, certainly, it is an unexpected thing. It is a roguelite game based on the Prince of Persia franchise from Evil Empire, who worked on the Dead Cells game. Um, I, I, I started that sentence as though I was going to say, like, trilogy or something. The Dead Cells. <laughs> but it is a singular game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it just means you're getting old because you're putting the in front of things that don't need it. Yeah, like the rogue, colon, Prince of Persia. <laughs> which, which is an odd, kind of an odd name, but also kind of kind of perfect at the same time because it's like, yeah, it, what is everyone going to call it? But it's like the rogue Prince of Persia game, you know? So. Yeah. It's so like they so went with, this... Uh, this Oh, go ahead, Marcus, please. Oh, uh, so like this this happened already this year. We we got a Prince of Persia already. What what is this? I I know, it's a wild thing. And um, you know, I, I got a chance to speak with Evil Empire a little bit about that. And um yeah, there was Prince of Persia the Lost Crown, which came out, gosh, I don't know, two or three months ago at the time of this recording. January? Which was a fan Yeah, it was like a fantastic uh, sort of Metroid and style, uh, Metroid inspired game based on Prince of Persia, and it was like such a good fit, you know, in terms of like franchise and genre. And I really love that game. And then now they've announced uh, very shortly after the release of that game, this, which is a roguelike game which plays a bit like Dead Cells. Uh, and again, it's a it's like a good fit for the sort of whole idea of the franchise, which has always been not always, I suppose, but you know, was born as a challenging 2D platformer. And the rogue part of it, where you die and restart, but kind of still maintain your memories, right? It's it's not that you are dying and then you, you know, oh, that didn't work, you, you start over. It's like you die and the prince goes back in time and gives it another shot. That's a very Prince of Persia thing. Yeah, I mean, it fits the uh, the roguelike structure pretty much like a, like a good glove. Um, the thing yeah. I'm most fascinated by as I'm watching you jump around and do stuff is the, uh, it looks like you're doing like wall running or wall climbing. Yeah, and by the way, I should make clear, this is not me playing. This is B-roll provided by Ubisoft, uh, showing presumably someone from Evil Empire playing the game. But that said, I did play the game. I did play this whole section. I got to spend a good bit of time. Uh, I did like two, or maybe three runs, I think. Um, I, I definitely uh, got my butt kicked by the boss at the end, but I did pretty well leading up to that. But to your question, yeah, a, a big mechanic here is that the prince can run along the wall. Like, you can see there's almost like, like a background often. Like, the way the levels are designed, you can tell if there's a place where you can run along the wall, and the prince can run horizontally, horizontally he can run vertically, and it just helps with progression. It's almost there, like, in lieu of, like, a double jump. And it also lets them design levels around, you know, how they want you to, to move. And it, it feels good. You just hold down a trigger, and the prince runs, which is exactly how it was in Sands of Time. That's awesome. And I also noticed just from the uh, the Dead Cells uh, influence, the sort of, like, weapon selection that you had there, that store and in, in that chest that you found, I assume it works the same of, like, the... You know, each weapon has its own sort of, like, play style and, and like, stats. Yeah, no, the the Dead Cells, uh, I don't know, inspiration is probably not the right word in this case because it is from Evil Empire, the developer of Dead Cells. Um, it is very front and center. Like, as a big compliment, this game feels like Dead Cells to the point where, like, I, I'm not the biggest Dead Cells player in the world. Um, I enjoy that game and I've played it quite a bit. But um, I, I could, even with that, like, limited playtime, um, I could kind of feel myself uh, recalling old strategies and, like, the way I would think through things when I would find new weapons and stuff like that. It's like, what do I want? What am I enjoying? I really just generally tend to prefer the fast weapons. I'd rather hit three times and do less damage than uh, just hit once, you know, with a really powerful swing. So, like... I was always gravitating towards like twin blades and like quick swords, but I did find a couple like more like hammer, you know, type weapons that were slow but did a lot of damage. Hmm. Okay. And here, and are you having like? You... 
I just wanted to point out here quickly, Marcus, that you you drink from fountains, which is a very sense of time thing uh, to recover right, health, right, right. and that also fills in the top left there. You can see your like uh, your reusable health items. Oh, okay. So you have this two? Is that what it, I'm reading right? Yeah, that's what I have. In this run, I, I say me again, but this is somebody else playing. But that's, this is like, this is where I was. Like, this is what I was playing. So I feel like I'm having, <laughs> you know, flashbacks to my time. Yeah, I really like the art direction. Like, I, I was trying to find something to compare it to. And the, and the best thing I can think of is like, if you made a Prince of Persia show as a, or like Prince of Persia was a 2010s Cartoon Network show. <laughs> it, it's yeah, giving yeah. that vibe like of something like an okay ko or like even like a like to a lesser extent like a, a steven universe or something like i don't know something about the art direction fits like those vibes a little bit yeah uh, but like a little more angular really, you know less rounded sort of yeah yeah and just like really colorful and just more like stylized you know they're not going for like a <laughs> like I don't know, it's like gritty realism or anything like that, but it, but it's not that. Like it's got that. It's got a nice like cartoonish style, but I, I I'm afraid to use cartoonies. I feel like people automatically think that's like kitty. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and it's not that. It, it just has like it's just more stylized, you know. But I I like it, and especially the animation looks great too, which is like probably the most important thing you want to nail with a Prince of Persia game, right? <laughs> it is that the oh, yeah, animation, no, animation has to be top yeah, notch. Animation is crucial. Yeah, one thing which um, you've probably seen, I'm guessing Ubisoft put out a trailer for the game alongside with lifting, you know, an embargo with preview impressions and stuff. So there's probably a trailer out there, which I would assume shows what I saw, which was like the animated intro of the game, which looks fantastic, mm -hmm. right? Like they have this like 2D animated intro that, like you said, like kind of uh, more focuses on the style and it kind of explains what happens. And it's kind of a cool premise. Uh, within Prince of Persia lore, which, by the way, I, I spoke with Evil Empire, and they were very clear that, like, this is a completely separate Prince of Persia lore. This doesn't have anything to do with any of the previous Prince of Persia games or Lost Crown or anything. It's just, like, a totally, you know, wholly original Prince of Persia universe. But the idea, the premise, is that the prince has this uh, necklace that he's had, I guess, since he was maybe even born or just, like, the majority of his life that lets him... Like I said, like live basically a roguelike structure with his normal life, where he, he um, if he dies, he just gets like sent back to a checkpoint, basically. And um, what that has done for his life is like let him just be like he's not cautious at all about anything, right? Like he mm. has become this like acrobat because he's just a lunatic who runs around jumping off buildings and stuff because he's like who cares? I'm just gonna like. You know, I'm just gonna restart. You know, <laughs> wherever I am. Yeah. And it, makes, it, it has made him very bold, um, to a fault. And uh, in the in the story, uh, the Huns have invaded his town, um, because like he basically goaded them and was like, I don't I don't know the specifics of it, but it sounds like he was just kind of being a, a jerk and was like, Yeah, I bet. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah, that. Come, come try and take it. You know, and the Huns were like, Yeah, sure, I uh, we will. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, that sounds horribly irresponsible because I don't think he realizes that his people are also, they're not, they don't have that necklace. They're just going to die. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And in, and in the story, he has a child. It seems like he has a family. Um, and the, oh. and the animated intro shows him like, uh, saving his child from the Huns and then dying and having to like try again. Um, Mm. So, and, which is like, it's like, okay, that's a cool premise. Like, I love that basic idea for, like, why it's a rogue and, like, why he's restarting and, like, emotionally what that means for him. It's like he's trying to save his people and his family, specifically his child, uh, which, is, right. which is a pretty From the thing that he caused. From the thing that he caused. Yeah, I mean, that, which is, like, the, the best Prince of Persia stories are a result of him and his hubris. You know, Sands of Time... Uh, was a result of him, like, I don't remember, the, again, I don't remember the specifics. It's been a while. I actually well, it was him unleashing recently. the sands of time. Yeah, and then trying to and fix then his him mistake. him having to fix every, yeah. yeah and so then that pretty much carries, like I said, that pretty much carries through the rest of the trilogy, too. So yes, Yeah, yeah, I yeah. so it's point. like, it, it's a good sign of, like, you know, not only do they have the sort of mechanical idea down of, like, yeah, this will, this structure would work well within this, what we've established as the key components of this franchise is, like, and that, that extends to, you know, storyline as well, which is cool. 
Nice. Have you, when you played, did you get a sense of the uh, the difficulty compared to Dead Cells? Because Dead Cells, not not an easy game. Uh, I love Dead Cells to death, but I was like, does this feel like on par with that game's difficulty or like a step below? So I was having a fine time um, navigating the environment and doing just general combat. Like, I didn't feel like I was hitting too many challenge walls, which is good. Like, I'm not saying that is like it was too easy. Look, please don't read it that way. That's, that's not the case. But it might have just been my Dead Cells knowledge that made me sort of flow pretty well, if that makes sense. Um, sure. But when I got to the boss, it absolutely destroyed me. Like, I think I got, like, three or four hits in, and I died and got sent back. Um, and I asked them uh, at Evil Empire, like, this Prince of Persia is a franchise that is known, right? Like, it is, it appeals to a larger group of gamers beyond maybe even Dead Cells. Although, you know, Dead Cells became a huge hit, and people really liked Dead Cells a lot and found it a lot of fans. But, you know, when it comes to something like Prince of Persia, you're starting with a built-in player base, uh, which is one of the reasons a company like Evil Empire, you know, decides to make a game like this, right? It's like, we can take all the lessons we've learned from our own game and apply it to a franchise that people know better. But all that yeah, said, for sure. their response to me asking is like, it, do you, will this game be a little bit easier than Dead Cells? Their answer is basically no. Um, they they want to keep it challenging. They want to keep it more um, more understandable, right? Like that's always kind of the answer. It's like, it's not that we want the game to be easier. We just want people to have an easier time playing it, right? We want people to, sure. it, to make more sense and to be more understandable. Um, and it, sound, it seems like that's their goal here with um with the rogue prince of persia it's not easier but you know but yeah but to a certain degree make it um available to more players because dead cells does have a, a at least i felt like initially like there is a hump to get over in that game before you start finding your your rhythm you know oh yeah god the more you say the title the more i like it the, the rogue <laughs> prince of persia because obviously it plays it's a fun play on the fact that it's a roguelike but also there's yeah. something that makes it sound like it shouldn't exist like this is the rogue prince of persia like this isn't this isn't the prince of persia your daddy would sign up for or something like that <laughs> yeah yeah exactly he is he's dressed a little i feel like he's dressed a little warrior within esque which is like oh know, the color scheme yeah, yeah like the most like i'm a hardcore prince of persia <laughs> yeah. it's probably his most iconic look honestly at this point you think I feel so? like they always no. include it sands of time i, I mean on. No, I think it's I I chat or chat god comments YouTube oh. comments let us know but I would honestly because you see that reappear in other prince games the outfits it was the one they used for the live action movie like I think the warrior within look is the Shoot. it's the one that fans know and I think like the most and I it is a cool look <laughs> I forgot uh, about Gyllenhaal Prince. Yeah, that, you make a really good point there. That is true. Yeah, um, his scarf, or uh, his, uh, his, I guess not scarf, but uh, what do you what do you call a waist scarf? Uh, uh, belt? Uh, there's a name for it. His, his <laughs> cummerbond? I don't know. <laughs> or something. Yeah, I don't know what it's called. We're not, yeah, he's we're going to the prom. Writer. It's not fashion writers here. Exactly. I was going to say, it's very long. Almost, it's very cape-like. It seems like that would get caught in some stuff as he's jumping around, or it seems like you could take advantage of that as a as an opponent, just like, you know, yank it when he's jumping around. But... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but I, but you know what? But it. it looks cool, so, you know, that's all we care it about. It does look... Exactly. That's all that matters. It does look cool. Uh, this game looked cool. Okay, here we go. Here comes so, the boss. Uh, yeah. Is this the boss that uh, murdered you? This is the boss that murdered me. I did not get past this boss. We'll see how the um, uh, the, the player here does. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, a couple other details to, to bring up. Yeah, I, I mentioned you can run along walls, right? That's uh, very obvious. Um, you can also, you have your attack, and then the Y button I was playing on an Xbox controller is like a kick, um, where you can push enemies away, which, gosh, now that I think about it, I, was that Dead Cells? It's been a little while since I played Dead Cells, where you could kick alongside doing your standard attack. Um, and then you also have a counter, or not a counter, like a dodge with the B button um, that lets you do a little bit of the Sands of Time style vaulting off the shoulders of enemies. It's not quite the same, but it feels a little similar, uh, which is cool. And then also I, I, I ran into a few um, 
like challenges that were just like platforming challenges, which I really thought was cool. You know, I, th I think that's I think that's a fun element. Like I don't I like that it's it's not all combat necessarily. But um, but yeah, I mean that that's a look at the Rogue Prince of Persia. I'll have a, a written feature on the site as well, um, and it's going into early access in May. And uh, I like what I played. I had a good time with it, and I'm I'm very excited to have more Prince of Persia in my life. Same. I'm a huge Prince of Persia fan. I love the Lost Crown, uh, and I love Dead Cell. So this is like in a thing that I didn't know that I wanted. Basically, is that that marriage of the two uh, franchises. So yeah, I can't wait for this. Thank you.